I'm Ryan F9 and here are five ways to make your motorcycle safer. Number one, extra loud horn. Car drivers try to merge right into me on a weekly basis, so a better noisemaker is good for safety. This is the Slimline Sports Horn from PIAA. It'll do 112 decibels at 500 hertz. For comparison's sake, an average motorcycle horn throws around 100 decibels when it's brand new. If you're riding around on a 1980-something piece of history, your horn probably makes even less noise. So the Slimline gives me an extra 15 decibels or so, and while that might not sound like a lot, we have to remember that the decibel scale is logarithmic, so a gain of 10 actually means that the sound gets twice as loud. Ergo, this thing will blow your eardrums compared to a stock horn. Of course there are loads of other options, like the Sound Bomb or the Screaming Banshee, both of which are louder than this PIAA, but I still chose the Slimline because it only draws 2.8 amps, so it's not going to fry any of my fuses. Plus, it's super easy to install. As the name suggests, the Slimline Sports Horn is slim. I measured this guy about 10 by 8.5 by 4 centimeters, so that's not going to take up much space on my machine. It's actually about the same size as my stock horn, which is just under the beak here. So I'd probably just install this guy in the same place. And at a featherweight 185 grams, it doesn't take much engineering to mount the thing either. Speaking of which, you are supposed to reuse the factory wiring with this guy. And if your bike uses a plug attachment instead of the positive and negative leads, well, it's okay, because PIAA threw in the ground wire that you'll need to make that work. So all around, not hard to install. My only complaints with the Slimline can be counted on three fingers. One, it only does a 500 hertz frequency, and I wish it alternated between two different tones because that's better for grabbing attention. Two, this cover is only water resistant, so I have to mount it somewhere that's not gonna get direct spray. And three, the main unit is metal, but this exterior housing is plastic, so parts of my motorcycle that get hot are gonna be a no-go when it comes to installation. Now, my number two mod to improve safety is green, gooey, and cheap as hell. Tire sealant. The idea is simple. I deflate my tire, pull the valve out, and squeeze this stuff in. And then I just pump it back up and forget about it. As I ride, the centrifugal force will spread the slime all over the inside surface of my tire, and if I run over a nail, then this will magically plug the hole. Okay, so maybe it's not magic, but it is clever. Basically, this is just a bunch of fibers and congealing agents suspended in liquid goo. When you poke a hole in your tire, the pressure forces the slime through the hole. But while the liquid goo goes out, the fibers start to stack themselves up inside the puncture, packing together until they're airtight again. And the whole thing happens in an instant and only results in the loss of a few PSI. You probably won't even notice that you actually ran over a nail until you stop and see a little green spot on your tire. Tire sealant won't do too much for bead leaks or sidewall punctures, but on the contact patch, it'll fill up to a quarter inch hole. The safety benefit is obvious. My tire doesn't deflate, so I don't crash. There's even some protection from catastrophic punctures, like if you run over a railroad spike and put a two knee sized gap in your tire. Of course, slime won't completely fill a hole that size, but it will take a lot longer to exit your tire than the air. So it'll slow the deflation down, and that can make the difference between getting safely to the side of the road or losing control. Now before I sing too many praises, I should mention that this particular tire sealant is not the one I'd choose. Slime stays liquid, so when you go to swap your tires, it makes a bloody mess. Some mechanics straight up refuse to work on tires that have slime in them, and I don't blame them. Plus, this stuff is recommended as repair only for high-speed motorcycle tires. On the other hand, there's a brand called Ride On, which makes a tire sealant that turns into a semi-solid gel. And that way it doesn't leak everywhere when you remove the tire, and it has the added benefit of balancing the wheel. Most importantly, Ride On is kosher for high-speed motorcycle use. So I love tire sealant as a safety mod, but I'd take Ride On over this green stuff. Sorry, slime. My third favorite safety mod is about seeing and being seen. Lights. Basically, light yourself up and other people won't run into you. Or you can light your surroundings and avoid running into other stuff. Most light mods, like this unit from Kyriak and Constellation Light Bar, they do a bit of both. I'm going to wrap out the options real quick. Light bars are common on cruisers. They're typically mounted as a horizontal beam underneath the stock headlight or taillight. And they have two units on either end, which looks something like this. And this one is from a front light bar because it has the turn signal and then the extra headlight rather than an extra tail light. Then there's auxiliary lights. The name itself can refer to any secondary light, but in our circles, it typically denotes the single units that ADV riders attach to their crash bars. Underglow is a fun one. That's a downward facing light that creates an aura on the pavement underneath the motorcycle. It's actually really great for safety because most underglow is some sort of funky color and anything unusual is quick to get noticed. You can also buy handguard lights. Sometimes they're just white, sometimes they're secondary orange turn signals, sometimes both. 
you typically have to buy the entire handguard with the light in it, whereas if you just buy an LED and stick it up on here, then it's called an accent light instead. So, accent lights are single stick-on or screw-on units which you can put just about anywhere. They're most common on customized bikes, and while they're not so great for lighting your surroundings, they are handy for being seen. Then there are helmet lights. Those are usually stick-on LEDs which flash to garner attention. And finally, you can modify your existing lights. See, HID headlights are a really popular way to see further and get seen sooner. You can also get brighter turn signals and tail lights, although it's more common to use a modulator on those. A modulator is a device that can pulse your headlight or tail light to draw more attention. My fourth safety mod is similar to lights, but simpler. Reflectives. See, lights can be a pain in the ass. You have to figure out how to install them, rewire stuff, change bulbs and batteries, and if I get carried away, my motorcycle is going to start looking like a Christmas tree, which is lame. On the other hand, reflectives don't change the look of your bike that much, especially in the daylight. And rather than generating their own light, they borrow it from the car that's about to hit me. So this is cheap and easy to install. It's detail tape from ProGrip in reflective white, although there are a bunch of other fluorescent color options for people more interesting than myself. And theoretically, I could put it anywhere. I could line my side cases with it. I could trace the outline of my windshield. I could spell Ryan F9 across my gas tank like a narcissistic bastard, whatever. ProGrip does say that one roll is enough to circle both sides of two rims. So that gives you an idea about what they think I'll use it for. I know of some dandy Fort 9 stickers that are pretty bright. Shameless plug. You can also get reflective armbands or vests, which are really nice because you take them off during the day. Same goes for reflective magnets, which I can stick on my tank when the sun goes down. And finally, there's glow-in-the-dark piping you can get to actually trace the lines on your helmet if you want to look like something from Tron. Speaking of which, my fifth safety mod is also for my helmet. Multiple visors. Clear one at night, tinted one during the day. And don't underestimate what this is worth. Obviously, riding at night with a dark visor is stupid. You won't see as well, and sight is somewhat important for piloting a motorcycle. But riding during the day with a clear visor can also be dangerous. Prolonged exposure to bright light or glare, especially when your vision is focused, can quickly result in eye strain. Eye strain makes it hard to focus. I'll be slower to perceive visual stimuli, especially stuff in my peripheries, like a deer jumping onto the road, for example. Plus, eye strain can cause blurred or double vision. It can cause headaches, neck, and back pain. All of those things make it harder for me to ride a motorcycle. So I bought a couple different visors, and I swap them when I have to. My variant is about the worst helmet in the world to change a visor on, but it still only takes five minutes. And that's it for my favorite safety mods. Thank you guys very much for watching.